Hello guys, welcome to my channel Fun with Physics. In today's lesson, we are going to look at the dangers and application of electrostatic. In my last video, we were able to establish the fundamental law of electrostatic. That is, like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other. Okay? In today's lesson, we are going to look at the negative side of the hazards or the danger associated with static electricity and where we can find it useful. Okay? Now, for us to be able to understand this lesson properly, we need to understand some basic things like etin, like how we can charge a material or how a material can be charged other than by friction and so on. So what is etin? Etin or grounding is a way of decharging already charged objects, that is to make them neutral. Okay? So it's basically done by connecting using um, a conductive wire to connect the object to the earth. Okay, so in that way, the charge or the electrons can flow to earth, okay, conveniently without uh, causing any problem. When a charged object touches anything connected to the earth, the charge of the object becomes neutralized and loses its net charge. Now, if you have this sphere, for instance, negatively charged, and then you connect it with a conduct conducting wire like copper, aluminium, or any other wire to the earth, it loses its excess negative charge, okay? Making it to become neutral, that is equal positive and negative. In that way, the net charge is zero. But if the charged object is positively charged, and then it's connected with a wire to the earth, it automatically becomes neutral by taking in, accepting electron from the earth. Okay? So we can say the earth can do two things. It can give as much electron as possible to a charged object, and it can collect as much electron as possible from a charged object, making it to be neutral. Or neutralizing it now grounding or etting prevents explosive static discharge or a case of fatal shock now look at this scene where you have a tanker being filled up with fuel the fuel gets under um, and the, the tube from which the fuel is flowing to the tank get to be charged by friction. The fuel gains electron while the tube or the hose loses electron to become positive. The fuel now is negative. So as you keep putting fuel, it goes a long way to charge the rest of the the tank since it's, since it's already negative charge okay Alright. if there is a sudden discharge to this negative charge in any way there could be fire outbreak or explosion because fuel is highly flammable but a way to prevent this hazard or this sudden fire outbreak or explosion is simply by connecting the, the the tanker any part of the any metallic metallic part of the tanker to the edge using a conducting wire okay so in this way that's a safe part for electron to flow to the edge leaving the tanker to be neutral that is the net charge to be zero method of charging a material we are familiar with this friction friction has to do with rubbing the two material two neutral material together 
So one gets to lose its electron, while the other one gets to gain. The one that gains become negatively charged, while the one that lost is positively charged. Now the next method of charging here is by contact or conduction. By contact you have to take a charged rod and then touch it, place it on a neutral sphere or a neutral object. So the electron gets to transfer, the excess electron gets to transfer to the, to the sphere, making it to be uh, negatively charged, like what we have here. Now the tape method we have here is by what is called induction. Okay, here we tend to induce. When you bring a negative charge close to a neutral sphere, the negative charge in the sphere drifts to one side, that's polarizing the two ends of the sphere. One end becomes positive, while the other one becomes negative. Now, if there's any way you can move this negative to make the sphere to be positive, and one way of doing it is by connecting the sphere using a conducting wire, a metallic wire, to the edge. So this, this creates a, a, a part, a safe part for the electron to flow away, to run away from this one. You know, similar charges, they repel each other, to repel from this to the edge. So in that way, the sphere will be positively charged. So this method here is called induction. All right? Now having uh, observed these three methods, let's see if we can identify the methods correctly. What method is used here? Can you identify it? Of course, induction. Induction is the method used here. The hand creates a path for the electrons to flow away to the edge. What method is used here? Induction also, because there's no contact of any form. Can you see that the two sides are polarized in different ways? This is positively polarized and the other side negatively polarized. Become negative, has have negative side, okay, or negative pole, if you want. Now, what method is used here? Of course, it's friction, induction, and then contact, right? So it's inducing, just when it's about to touch, it induces. So electron can freely, freely flow through the wall to it, can leak off. How about this similar method, right? Yeah. And then this, charging by conduction or by contact, right? A neutral sphere, then you get to touch it, and then become charged with a charged material. How about this? Induction, that's good. And then this, by contact. Okay, now having looked at the three methods, we can now see why we sometimes get an electric shock when we touch a doorknob. Now study, look at the picture or the animation closely and let's see what's happening. Notice that as he's walking through the rug, he's losing electron to the rug. And the moment he's just about to touch this knob, this is already neutral. So at the time, at the point of touching the knob, since he's positively charged, the electrons flow through him. Okay? That is he. The electron flow through him to be the charge in his body. Okay? Can you see it? Now, the process of electron flowing is what causes the spark you see here. A spark is due to sudden discharge when electron flow to meet the proton or when negative charge flow to meet uh, the positive charge. Alright? So, whenever electron flow in air, they sense, uh, uh, there seems to be sparks or... Um, heated effect on the air all right and that is the shock we feel sometimes now electric discharge spark and current the laws of static electricity as charge move off an object is called electric discharge so whenever charge move off from an object to meet the other one it's what what is called discharge when 
is what is called discharge. When charge build up, spark will from form due to a sudden discharge. That is positive and negative coming together to neutralize. The discharge often causes sparks and sparks are charges or negative charge electron flowing through air and heating them up. Okay, so we'll get to see a larger scale of this very soon in lightning. Okay, but before that, let's look at this. We know that air is a natural core conductor, so it does not allow the charge to travel through it. But when a lot of charge builds up on one side, it tends to force its way through air to the nearest okay, conductor it can find. All right? So this process of forcing its way creates through the safest possible routes the shortest route, the shortest and best route, okay? This process is what we call, what we see as sparks, or what we call discharge, okay? This is what happened in thunder cloud, all right? Now, let's critically look at thunder cloud. Static electricity can build up in air, which is an insulator and can be discharged as spark or flash. But how does this happen? The thundercloud causes separation of charges on the ground. Now look at this. We know that charges can build up here due to friction of the cloud with air, with water molecule, or with dust. Okay, or with even ice. Making one side to be positively charged and the other end below to be negatively charged. Now, this charges in turn causes a separation of charge on the ground. It repels the electrons that are present in all of these objects. Now, before now, all these objects are neutral, okay? But because of this build up of negative charge, electrons are repelled and leak off to the earth. If the cloud is low enough or charge enough electrons can move through the moist air in the best route the best route it can take to the nearest highest objects on the ground in this way it can easily be discharged to the earth this movement causes sparks or lightning a charge heat of the air okay that is the the, the, the sparks we do see during uh, lightning okay the electrons tend to move to the nearest uh, object or nearest part it can take it can take to the earth to be discharged okay notice that this is positively charged whereas that is negatively charged and this happens due to the process of induction remember what we talked about inducing charge Okay, now lightning can sometimes cause the outbreak of fire due to its severe temperature and heat in air. But technically, lightning is a movement of charge, the movement of electron. An electron doesn't have temperature. But when it travels in air, which is an insulator, it heats it up. Okay, it's like something with a high resistance and then it's forcing its way. It heats it up five times as much as the temperature of the sun. So you can guess the temperature. So that is why lightning is very dangerous and it can cause a serious fire outbreak, okay? Or even death if somebody's, uh, uh, if somebody's struck by lightning. Now, reducing the risk. Since lightning is dangerous, hazardous, how do we reduce the risk? One way of reducing the risk is by using what is called a lightning rod. Like we said earlier, lightning strikes the highest point in a charged area because that point provides the shortest path for the charge to reach the ground. So anything that sticks up in an open area provides a path for lightning to take to the earth and be discharged. 
So lightning rod is a pointed rod connected to the ground. Okay, usually a conductor that provides a safe, the safest path for electrons to flow. Now, now notice that there's a build up of positive charge around the conductor, around the spiky area. There's a build up of due to a negative charge here. A, ne a negative charge in the cloud induces a positive charge around this area and around the building. Okay, but instead of a sudden discharge, this conductor provides a path for the electrons to flow to the X without causing any serious um, damage here or any serious problem here. Okay? Now, objects such as lightning rod that are joined to X by a conductor such as wire are grounded. Any object that is grounded provides a path for electric charge to move to the X. Because X is so large, it can give up or absorb charges without being damaged safely. Okay? There's no need for us to emphasize that. What are the dangers of static electricity? We know that the danger of static electricity is this. It could cause explosion due to sudden discharge, especially when you have the places like oil companies that are working with highly flammable substances or even a paper mill here. It can cause fire outbreak in a paper mill here. Okay? So for this reason, um, they are connected to the X so that any charge built up can easily be discharged before a fire outbreak, before sudden fire outbreak or sudden discharge can take place. Okay? How are planes refueled safely? Now we've talked about this previously, but I can emphasize it again just on this, on this slide. When oil or petrol is pumped along pipes, a static charge can build up on the pipe due to friction, yes, which could result in a spark and cause explosion. Remember how the fuel gets to be charged. The fuel moves through this and the friction between this hose or this rubber or this tube and the fuel causes one of them to be negatively charged while the other become positive. One gets to lose electron, the other one gets to gain. This can cause, in turn, cause the, 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 the airplane to be charged up. Any sudden discharge can cause fire outbreak or explosion because of how flammable this fuel is. Okay? So the way of preventing it is to connect it to the earth to be charged smoothly. In electronics, engineers who make circuits like televisions and small components like our mobile phones use this form of wristband here to quickly discharge any charge built up in a device. Otherwise, it can tamper with a sudden discharge can tamper with the, the circuit, you know, built up, the circuit components. Okay, so because to, to avoid something like this, they use this wristband to quickly charge whatever charge is built up to the edge quickly. And in that way, it prevents uh, a serious problem. Application of electrostatic. We can apply electrostatic in a device known as a digital sensor. Okay? In this, any device that has a sensor, a sensor in it, is referred to as a digital sensor, like your touch screen, your mobile touch screen, your TV touch screens, and so on, your laptop touch screen, and so on. Okay, but we are going to talk about this: the capacitor touch screen that's the one we are concerned with because there are other technology that are associated with different other touch screens now one of the application like i said is in digital sensor that is in capacitor in capacitor touch screen devices now how does it work now you need to understand how a capacitor what a capacitor and how it works before you can understand how the touch screen actually work okay now, a capacitor is basically made up of two plates. 
separated by an insulator which is called a dielectric the insulator could be a paper a plastic air or whatever now when you apply uh, a voltage or electricity on the two ends of the capacitor on this side of the plate and on the other side of the plate it forces electron out from one of the plates into the other plate so the moment you remove the electricity the electrons remain there okay so when you touch we have this device right here on this screen so when you touch the screen the amount of charge on any specific point changes okay you are connected to the earth but the moment you touch it the charge on any spot changes this is sensed by a sensor which interprets it accordingly okay now another application is spray painting in spray painting the nozzle of the paint, paint is charged positively is connected to an electrostatic generator the positive side positive terminal while the other uh, the car body is connected to the negative side of the electrostatic generator okay and then let's add in here to avoid um, any unforeseen electric cushion or electric shock okay now when you spray this when you spray this the positive charged paint stick firmly on the negative charge car body it's not just firmly but also uniformly let's look at this the paint droplet spreads out now in this case the the nozzle is negatively charged and the car body is positively charged now look at what's happening in the picture the droplets they spread out because they have they have the same charge but they get to stick firmly on the body of the paint okay the coating is even that's uniformly distributed because parts that are already painted will repel any more paint already painted parts are negative so they will repel negative the parts that are not painted will attract the negatively charged paint that is a positive charged body will attract the negative charged paint the next application of electrostatic is in electrostatic precipitator a precipitator is simply a device that can be used to remove ash and waste gases uh, particles in waste gases okay so how does it work a precipitator uh, 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 is, is seen in a chimney usually in a power station or in an industry okay now this chimney has um, um, a grid a charged grid, positively charged grid, or uh, negatively charged grid. Yes. So when the smoke pass through, pass through the grid, it pick up the charge of the grid. That's become negatively charged. And by the side, we have a positively charged plate and a collector. So the moment the smoke get to that positively charged plate, it attracts. It's, it's been attracted to the plate. You know, both negative attracts positive okay so we can shake off this plate and then collect the suit the, the waste or the solid particles here in this plate the collector so in this way the gases that will move out of the chimney will be free from polluting particles okay will be particle free are we good okay now the next application is electrostatic duster. When you sweep a duster across a surface, friction causes it to become charged with static electricity. This in turn induce opposite charge on the dust and attract them to the duster. So it's common. We use it in our day-to-day -day life. Now another application is in digital sensor, like a digital camera. Now, a digital camera is slightly different from a capacitor touch screen device like a mobile phone, okay? Because it has what is called a CCD, a charge coupled device, okay? Now, this charge coupled device 
it act that act, it's, a, it's a device in the in behind of the uh, camera that actually work like a capacitor what it does is that it senses light okay the moment it senses light charges is built on it based on the intensity of the light it senses okay unlike the other one that you need to apply a voltage a current to be able to move one charge here the light it senses causes charge to be built in it okay based on how much light that it sends the amount of light la, uh, the, the amount of charge stored uh, okay the charge is produced the charge is stored in a component capacitor okay the charge built up is stored the amount of charge stored depends on the intensity of the light i've said that the charge on each component is transferred to a circuit that produces a type of signal called a digital signal. The camera in turn converts this signal to what we call image. Okay? Right, now this is a summary of the application of static electricity. We have spray painting, we have precipitator, we have photocopier, we have electrostatic duster and um, but it's also digital sensor devices like your touch screen and your digital camera okay now extension van de graaff generator now there are cases where we need to produce charge for use in a lab so all we need to do is to use this device this generator here to give us the kind of charge we need. The generator basically have these components of metal spherical drum here to collect the charge, a belt conveyor and a comb. Okay, this comb gets to charge the belt to be positive on one side and the belt on the other side is negatively charged like what we have in this case. Okay? So the positive charge gets to transfer to be transferred to this metal sphere here. If in any case you happen to touch the sphere, this is exactly what will happen to your hair. All the stands in your hair will, all the hair, each of your hair will stand like this, repelling each other, okay? Because they have the same charge. If the uh, sphere is positively charged, it means your hair is going to each of your hair stand will be positively charged. But if the sphere is negatively charged, it means your hair will be negatively charged. Okay, so what is actually happening here is a separation, repulsion. Okay, now if one end of the, the negative charge end is connected to something to a sphere and brought close together there's going to be a sudden discharge or a sudden spark spark generated due to sudden discharge extension also electric field electric field now guys you are familiar with field like a football field a basketball field and you will notice that the region is usually marked. For instance, in a soccer pitch, a, a football field, once the ball is kicked off from, the, from that region, it becomes a true win or a corner kick or something. Okay? The same applies to electric field. It's a region where electric force is experienced. And the force could be attraction force or repulsion force. Electric field is drawn using what is called electric line of force. This is a line of force. That's how we draw electric field. We use line of force. The arrows move, the arrows on this line indicate the direction of the electric field. That means the line of force is actually from the positive to the negative. The line of force is defined as the part a positive charge will take if you place it in the field so if i take a small positive charge and place it on this field where will it go to of course it's going to go to the negative so that part it take 
is the line of force. Now let's look at different field pattern. Let's look at, for this is an isolated positive charge, an isolated negative charge. For an isolated positive charge, if I bring a positive charge close, what happens? There's repulsion. If I bring it here, repulsion. If I bring it here, repulsion in a straight line. Bring it here, repulsion. So that way, there will be repulsion in any part of this, of this positive charge. Okay? So our arrow, of course, will point away, showing that's a repulsion. But if I bring a negative positive charge close to this negative charge here, to this point, there will be attraction. At any point here, at any point in the circle, there's going to be attraction. So all the arrows are going to point, the arrows are going to point towards the negative, showing that a post, more positive charge in the field will be attracted to it. So this is uh, a field pattern of two different charges, positive and negative. So a small positive charge, we tend to move to the negative on any of this side, okay? Also, on behind the negative charge, we tend to move towards the negative. But for this case here, a positive or a, and a positive or a negative and a negative. For this one, positive and a positive, if I bring a small positive charge on this region, it moves off, drifts off. So there's a repulsion between these two. But uh, two plates, let's say this plate is negatively charged and one is positively charged. Of course, if I bring a positive charge here, it's going to drift towards the negative. So guys, um, with what you have done, I believe you can be able to, to uh, say one or two things about the dangers of electrostatic or where, it can, where, it, where it's actually useful. Okay? Now, let's apply the knowledge of what we have learned to solve this problem. You have to solve on your own or comments. Comment the answer on the comment section below. Why do we shake aerosol can before spraying? If you have the answer, please comment. Use your knowledge of what you've learned to comment on the comment section. Jane was worried about her treadmill causing scratches, her treadmill causing scratches on, the, on her nice floor. So she puts a rubber mat on the net. She kept getting shocked each time she used a treadmill. Explain what could have happened and how she could solve this problem. Okay, it's Jane. All right, guys, if you have the answers to this, please comment on the comment section. Thank you.